¿Y cómo anda de ideas, de decisiones, de angustias? Porque lo vamos a invitar, yo no creo que haya una solución, hay un caminito, un umbral. Nos vamos a ir allí donde quizás nació el psicoanálisis. Allí vivía un señor que la pensaba mucho y nos dejó un legado, que son ideas, libros, escritos, cosas contradictorias a veces. Nos vamos a ir a la casa nada menos que el señor Sigmund Freud. Y allí está el museo y ya se hicieron más de 100 años que han pasado donde podrás encontrar cosas que te parecen actuales, te parecen definitivas Podrás pararte en la puerta del piso de abajo, tocar el timbre y quizás te atiendan y te solucionen algún problema. Vamos, nos acompañan, nos vamos a Viena. When you visit the Sigmund Freud Museum, don't forget to ring the bell. The same bell his patients rang 100 years ago when they came to see the professor. He was not only one of the most famous cigar smokers in the world. As a founding father of psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud produced seminal ideas that have heavily influenced our understanding of the mind. I think the most important point is that he discovered the human unconscious. And that opens up the possibility for a very new self-understanding of the human being. And that is, till today, the most important impact of his legacy on our cultural life. What, what do you think Sigmund Freud was like as a human, as just an ordinary person, not this, not this figure that we've almost deified since his death? He was very vain. Okay. And academic and serious and generous. Mm -hmm. And we try to show in our exhibitions not only the Freud as psychoanalyst, also as father, as son, as brother. His daily life was very strict, um, regulated. Okay. And he started uh, breakfast at seven and started with his work at eight. And Anna called him watchman because he was, because of his accurate appearance at the meals. Mm -hmm. And he did a lot of different things. So he loved to go to the opera to hear uh, Yvette Gilbert sing, and he was hiking in the surroundings of Vienna. And he was doing every day a walk through the inner city, visiting the coffee houses like Landmann mm -hmm. and Café Corp, playing chess there. And Yeah, and he was working hard every day, except Sunday and, and Saturday. He was there for his family. Sigmund Freud was inspired by antiques, and he was an avid collector. While he was working, he was surrounded by many statues and vases on the shelves of his study. Did he have a psychiatric disorder himself? Was he also dealing with these issues? So, who does not? True. <laughs> Freud uh, told us that it's all of us in some when in their life might be suffering from a, a mental disease. Mm -hmm. Vienna at around the year 1900 looks like to him. What was the city that he was encountering? What was the general feeling and atmosphere here? So I think it was a wonderful city and that there happened a lot of new things on all different disciplines in arts, culture, literature, mm -hmm. especially, and also in medicines. How controversial were his ideas at his time? Were they accepted? Was he accepted? Uh, no, he was laughed at. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he was called a storyteller especially because he tried to find another method than electroshocks. So he was laughed at first, and then he was so supported by so many patients. A newly designed permanent exhibition takes you back to the time when Sigmund Freud was living and working at Berggasse 19. Traces of former usage on the walls were uncovered, original wall paintings, wallpaper, and remains of fabrics. 
except of other house museums that are stuffed with original objects. Bergasse 19 is a place, a court memory space, because of the expulsion of the Freud family mm -hmm. in 1938. So we decided to make the house itself to the exhibit, to show the house itself, the original structure of the rooms. So I think it's a very special museum because it's a special place. A stairway at the Sigmund Freud Museum is dedicated to the history of the building itself and its dark story. The apartments were used by the Nazis as collective apartments for Jews. A total of 79 people were housed here until their final deportation. In 1938, Sigmund Freud was no longer safe in Vienna after the Nazi occupation. At the last second, he fled to London, bringing most of his belongings. The spot where the psychoanalytical couch once stood remains empty. The saddest chapters in his life was when him and his family were forced to flee Vienna and were sent into, lived in exile in London, which is where he sadly passed away. What did that represent to him to have to leave here under these circumstances and to go someplace else? There was so much resignation and sadness. Before he left, he wrote, I want to leave to die in freedom. But uh, being in London, he said that the feeling of triumph um, because of the liberation uh, blends with grief because you almost love the prison you were released from. Sigmund Freud's work and his importance are best understood by following the process of how he developed his ideas here in his former living quarters and office at the house at Bergasse 19. This is where he lived and worked for more than 47 years. And the house provides a glimpse into Sigmund Freud's biography, his cultural environment, and the development of psychoanalysis. The chief patient I am preoccupied with is myself, Freud stated in one of his letters. He was plagued by self-doubt. At the end of each working day, the father of psychoanalysis analyzed himself. <laughs> 